Colorado. This is our fourth show of 11 shows here on ESPN. And after one rotation, Cheryl Dundas leads Jennifer Hagberg by a .075 margin. On the men's side, two rotations have been completed. Mark Warburton is leader by a .5 margin over Drew DiStefano. And right now we are going to the Steel Rings event. This is the third event for the men, and Mark Warburton is up first. Mark lists the rings as one of his best events. As I mentioned earlier, he's been having trouble with an ankle, so his floor and vaulting, the tumbling type events, aren't that strong. But you can see he's very strong in the upper body. As he opened that routine with a kip to an L cross, he kips back to an L, and a beautiful straddle plunge, giant to a handstand. See, he has good locked out arms in the handstands. A really nice combination of piked double whippets nice. or yamawakis as they were invented by Yamawaki from the Japanese team. Now he's swinging, is that gonna hurt him? Yet, for every full swing, the judges take a tenth of a point, but his challenge is to not allow the swinging elements to throw him off, because if you bail from the handstand at the wrong time, you could really be in a lot of trouble. Although the swings are minor deductions, you can't let them turn into major deductions. Watch this combination. He stays in the pike position. One Yamawaki to the next. Pretty silly names, aren't they? <laughs> Back uprise to a straddle L. Really good swing elements. He showed good strength elements at the beginning, something the judges are looking for. And an excellent layout double back with one short hop. His score is 9.60. Nice layout. Great exercise. He has everything. He's got the strength, the swing, and a good dismount. His advantage going in was 0 .5, 9.60. His third score of this U.S. Challenge round. Now Drew DiStefano is up. Lifting him up to the rings is Ed Birch, who coaches in Albuquerque. Also coaches... Uh, current star of the U.S. team, Lance Reynolds. No trouble on that plunge. He's a little nervous. It seems like he could settle down a little bit and focus on the positions. He seems to be rushing it a little bit. too fast on the press to handstand. Mm -hmm. He needs to take his time and show the judges that he's in control. He's a little anxious. He's very quick. And I'm sure he has that very high-spirited performance, which many times is very impressive. But when you get to the slow parts, you have to squeeze out the positions and show the judges that you're completely in control at all times. And he had trouble there. He bails out forward. Does a Yamawaki, as we've seen Warburton just do, but he did it in a tuck position, and it didn't have the long flowing swing mm -hmm. that Warburton used. This is the dismount, a laid out double, a little sloppy in the air, but plenty of rotation. Well, that's what I like about this uh, U.S. Challenge format. We can see two gymnasts head-to-head. -head. Now there's a score for Drew DiStefano, 8.95. And even if you know nothing about gymnastics, you can simply compare in your living room what these two gymnasts are doing and who actually is the better gymnast. Continuing now with the women as they move over to their second event, the uneven parallel bars are next. Jennifer Hagberg is up first. She changes grip. The move's called a Jaeger. It's a straddle front flip. She traverses to the lower bar. She has to work both bars. The judges are looking for changes of direction. She's shown that by doing pirouettes. It's a reverse. Oh! That was a reverse act. She was going for her second release move, which is really the style these days. One release move isn't enough anymore. You have to show two big release moves if you want the big scores. She received a 9.475 on the vault. Her opponent received a 9.55, so she's already down 0.075, and the last thing she needed was a fall on the unevens. Keep in mind, she'll lose a half a point, and then she has to pick up the exercise from where she left off with a 
very nice pike double dismount. It's a shame she had trouble on the reverse head because that was a good routine. She had a lot going there. This is the Jaeger. You can see she's going forward with an under grip, straddled front flip right there to a regrasp. Nicely done, and she traverses to the lower bar. Glide kip, and she continues on. Now, she had trouble here. This is the reverse hecked. Everything looks pretty good. She pulls it just too far over the bar. So you can see she's way out on her fingertips, and she didn't quite get the reverse rotation back to allow her hands to catch back onto the bar. It's a very difficult move. She just about had it. She finished, of course, with a very nice pike double back. That's too bad, because the reverse hack actually looked pretty good up yeah. until it came time to regrass. Technically, it was good. The form in the air was good. It was just a little overdone. 8.975 is the score for Jennifer for that uneven parallel bar performance. And now Cheryl Dundas is up. On the vault, she received a 9.55. Rattle over to the high bar, cast the handstand. Giant half, half, she had a little trouble there, but she kept it going, right to a reverse hack. Now that's the move that we just saw her competitor, Hagbird, have trouble with, but she made it nicely. Back to handstand, giant swing, giant swing, two very nice giants, and a tuck double back. That was a nice, clean routine by Cheryl Dundas, the 16-year-old, born in Denver, Colorado, but currently residing in Austin, Texas. She did the giant half-half. It was supposed to be a full turn in one motion, but she continued right through to a reverse hex, so she used two important and difficult moves back to back and the judges are looking for those things. They can value raise the score if you do two difficult moves back to back. Well, all she needed was an 8.95 and she got a lot more than that from the judges. A 9.675 is the number granted to Cheryl Dundas for her performance in the uneven parallel bars. She is now way out in front of Jennifer Hagberg.